Alright guys, we're going to do a quick review of the first three steps and then I'm just going to go over um, electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation for you uh, for your quiz tomorrow. So um, just as a uh, refresher, first thing that happens uh, is going to be glycolysis. Glycolysis happens in all living things. It is the oldest process and essentially what we do is we take two Six carbon sugar. We split it in half. Takes two ATP to do that. And we end up with two pyruvates, which give us four ATPs. It also gives us, and just as importantly for aerobic respiration later, it gives us two NADHs. All right, so if you recall, the NADHs are the reduced form of NAD+. They're very important because it gets us our electrons uh, that we're going to need later on. So then, once glycolysis happens, as long as there is oxygen, So, if oxygen, then we're going to move on. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go into mitochondria. So, if you recall, in the mitochondria, we have the outer membrane and the inner membrane. <clears throat> and then inside here, we have the matrix. So what's going to happen is the pyruvates are going to each travel into the mitochondria. And as they do that, we have a second step. And that step is called the oxidation of pyruvate. So as each pyruvate moves in, one carbon is popped off in the form of carbon dioxide, and that becomes a waste product. The other thing that we get out of the oxidation of pyruvate is two NADH. So if you're keeping track, we had two NADH here, so two electrons with the hydrogens following them. And two here. Sugar had 12 of them, so we're down to eight. Now, the other thing that happens in the oxidation of pyruvate as it comes into the mitochondria is the remaining carbons, which are now two carbon molecules called acetyl, or that are acetyl groups, they get added to an enzyme called coenzyme A to form acetyl CoA. All right now, each of those acetyl CoA molecules is going to enter the next step, which is citric acid cycle, sometimes called Krebs. In the Krebs cycle, we're going to take a, an existing four carbon molecule, we're going to add the acetyl group using the coenzyme A to help it make a six carbon molecule. We are then going to pop off one of the carbons as CO2, leaving us with a five carbon molecule. We will pop off another one of the carbons more waste more CO2 is wasted or is released
to get a couple of ATP down here. We'll say plus one each time. So we're left with a four carbon sugar. We'll restart the process. In the meantime, we also get a decent amount of NADH. So we get one here. We get one here. We get one here. And we get an FADH2, a similar molecule, here. So I get four more electrons, which of course is all we're trying to do right now. Ox we oxidize that sugar. So I got two electrons up here in glycolysis. I got two electrons here, one for each pyruvate in the oxidation of pyruvate. I got four here times two, so another eight, and that is the full 12 hydrogens. So what we've done in these first three steps, glycolysis, the oxidation of pyruvate in the citric acid cycle was simply to harness all of our electrons out of the sugar. And so ultimately, I now have plus 10 NADH plus 2 FADH2 and plus 4 ATP. Now, the ATP, recall, is relatively unstable, so it needs to be used right away. But the electrons are stored energy that we can now use for the next step. And the next step is going to be electron transport. So if I continue my inner and outer membrane, On the inner membrane, we have what is called the electron or chain or the electron transport system. A series of proteins, each a little bit more electronegative than the next. We also in here have a molecule called or a protein called ATP synthesis. Now, these are two different systems. So, the first system, the electron transport chain, is what's going to build our gradient. The second system, which has the ATP synthase, is what's going to use potential energy from that gradient, turn it into kinetic energy, and ultimately power formation of ATP. How does it work? Well, the first thing that we need is this entire process needs oxygen. So, oxygen comes in at the end of the electron transport chain. Now, the NADH and the FADH2 drop off their electrons. So, we get a little electron. We get a little electron dropped off right there. I also get some hydrogen ions. So, when the electron gets popped off, the hydrogen gets left in the middle. Now, that electron is going to flow from one protein to the next, kind of like going downstairs. And you can think about it like going downstairs or like going from a higher to a lower with gravity at the higher energy level to a lower energy level. Now, as it does that, it takes the hydrogens and it moves them through, it moves them through the um, protein pumps which are powered by the moving electrons. So what I do is build very great, because if you notice, there's not much space in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And so by pumping hydrogen, we get a higher concentration. We might even have more hydrogen down here in the matrix, but because there's a, a smaller amount of room in between the two membranes, it creates a chemical gradient. All right. At the end, that electron ends up 
going to the oxygen. But what else happens is since we've built this gradient, we have the movement of hydrogen through the ATP synthase. That takes inactive ADP and an organic phosphate and adds them together to become ATP. Now the hydrogens that flow back in end up over here. And so now I have hydrogens, oxygen, and electrons. And those come together to form water, which is a waste. Now, we can use the water. For this process, it's a waste product. And so what we can do is end up with, for every one sugar, we end up with roughly 34 more ATP. Now, this entire process, from start to finish, can give us anywhere between 30 to 40 P, depending on its efficiency. You might ask, how? why is that number varied? Well, the two that are formed here are always two for sugar. And the two that we get here, for two times through the citric acid cycle, they are always two ATP total. But all of the pooled electrons get thrown into the matrix. When they get thrown into the matrix, they don't just go in one electron transport chain. They go in electron transport chains all down the inner membrane. So basically, all the electrons from the sugar are pulled, from the sugars are pulled together. So scientists have to take the number of moles of sugar that go in, number of moles of ATP that come out, and divide, and figure out exactly how efficient this process is. And it generally comes up about that much. All right. So we have taken the chemical energy from the sugar here, we have harnessed it all as electrons for the most part. We've used it to build a gradient of hydrogen ions. And then we've used that hydrogen ion gradient to go through ATP synthase all down the membrane. And everywhere this happens, that movement is like a hydroelectric plant. It is powering the formation of ATP. And that process is called chemiosmosis. So this process, green, is chemiosmosis. And this, pro this entire process at the electron transport, including the electron transport and the chemiosmosis, is called oxidative. All right, and that basically should cover chapters 9.2, 9.3, and 9.4. And our quiz will be on everything from redox reactions in 9.1 up to 9.4. We'll discuss uh, if no oxygen later. We'll go fermentation.